Well, hello, fellow constitutionalists. On this video today, we're going to talk about David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez and their accusations against the NRA threatening them. Now, I have a couple articles here I want to share with you today, but before I get into those, let me show you. If you don't know who they are, um, this is uh, this picture coming up here is uh, David Hogg, and then the next one coming up is Emma. Gonzalez or Gonzalez. Now, these are the two that are like the most prominent faces of March for Our Lives movement, okay? And it's really funny how they can go through these interviews and say what they're saying and the interviewers don't challenge them. Now, I don't expect the NRA to challenge what they're saying because I think the NRA is playing this smart. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I've been trying to chase down proof that the NRA has been threatening both uh, David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez without much success. Now, if you know, if you've watched an interview where they actually, the interviewer asked them for proof and they gave proof, please let me know. Get, send me a message down in the uh, comments below here, and I'll put out another, uh, correct. I'll put out a correction uh, for this, another video uh, to correct any any wrongs that I did in this video. I've, I've seen a bunch of interviews uh, with both of them, and I don't hear the interviewers asking for the proof of the threats. And this is, this is astonishing to me. They're being interviewed, and these two are, are saying that an organization is threatening them, yet they don't press them on it, okay? Um, David nor Emma haven't been very truthful about the Parkland High School shooting when appearing on the TV. They just haven't. Uh, they've been all over the place. They won't... Uh, uh, most of these places that they're going to won't interview the other side of the story or other students that hold a different opinion. It just, they won't do it. And that's another story in and of itself. Uh, and, and I don't look for that to change anytime soon. Now, there might be some things coming up. Uh, there's been, um, I've seen some things, haven't really investigated it, where they said that David Hogg wasn't actually at the school at the time of the shooting, but I'm, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's conspiracy theory or what's going on there. But let me get into these two articles real quick here because I don't want to make this um, video longer. It has to be uh, for this. So we have here this uh, first article uh, that we have is uh, from the Washington Times by Jessica Chasmar, posted on 319 of this year. And it says, David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez, NRA has been basically threatening us. Now, when you put that word basically in there, you can, honestly, you can say, you can say anything that anybody says is a threat. Um, I, and, and you heard me talk about this before, my video, 15 Things That Emma Gonzalez Got Wrong, I got a community strike on that for harassing and bullying. I appealed it. And, and somebody put eyes on that, and they decided, no, I wasn't bullying her. I was just disputing the facts uh, that she had. And I went through my comments to make sure there wasn't any derogatory comments as much as I could. And so I got my video back. I got my live streaming privileges back. Uh, so that could have been somebody, you know, well, they're, he, he's just basically threatening you by saying what you're saying is wrong. And that's, that's the definition of basically threatening. I mean, what is that? Either... Either they're threatening you or they're not. There is no in-between, in my, in my opinion. And if they're threatening you, that's against the law, and that needs to be given to the authorities. But they don't, even, they don't even talk about that. They don't even say that they've turned it over to the authorities for investigation. So I'm real skeptical about these two going forward. Now, David Hogg and em Emily Gonzalez, two students who survived last month's mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, said Monday that the National Rifle Association has been basically threatening. Mr. Hogg and Ms. Gonzalez, who came to national prominence after repeatedly attacking the NRA and pushing for stricter gun control laws in the wake of February 14th massacre, told CBS News the NRA had recently reached out to them. The way, the way that they've been reaching out to us is basically threatening us, Mr. Hogg said. They've been instigating things, Ms. Gonzalez added, and then when we reply... They, like, shy back away. They can't dish it out, uh, or they can dish it out, but they can't take it. The pair didn't expand on what the NRA allegedly did to constitute a threat. I think it just goes to prove what exactly they are, Mr. Hogg said. 
I don't think NRA members are bad people at all. I think the responsible gun owners that want to become politically active and make their voices heard in this democracy. And I think that's an excellent thing. Now, two points here that Mr. Hogg really got wrong here. Um, the NRA is the oldest civil liberties group or organization in the United States of America. They have been political since their founding. They represent gun owners, individual citizens of the United States. They represent our wants, needs, and desires at Congress. You know, in the First Amendment, we have that right to redress our government. And I'm not a member of the NRA. I don't have anything against them. I used to be years ago. I'm just not now. Uh, I support a lot of things that they do. And, you know, if you want to be a member, fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. But get your facts straight. Two, we're not a democracy. Progressives and those folks that are behind all this, behind uh, Mr. Hogg and Ms. Gonzalez, uh, they want everybody to believe that we're a democracy and that we can just go to the ballot box and vote our feelings, and that's going to change everything in the country. The last president we have, uh, President Barack Obama, did nothing to dissuade this idea of a democracy because he used the same term. A lot of Democrats use it. Uh, a lot of Republicans use it, too. So call us a democracy. We are not a democracy. We are a constitutional, representative republic. And a republic protects the minorities from the majority. And I'm not talking about skin color, race, ethnos. I'm talking about opinions. I'm talking about politics here. And a republic protects the rights and freedoms of the minority against an unruly majority. In a democracy, there is no such protections. 51% of the people can vote to take away your rights. And that's what they wish they had here in the United States was a democracy, that they wouldn't have to go through this pesky um, amendment process to do away with the Second Amendment. And make no mistake about it, folks, that's exactly what they want. They want to take away your Second Amendment rights. They want to confiscate your guns and only leave the guns in the hands of the government. Now, the irony with that, and this is, this is also something that's kind of funny too, the irony of that whole situation is that they keep calling President Trump Hitler and his minions, you know, the, the uh, Gestapo and Nazis and all that kind of stuff, and yet... They want the government and the police to be the only ones, the only ones to have the firearms or have the guns. <laughs> They're all over the place, folks. They're such hypocrites. They are really such hypocrites that it, it just goes beyond belief. And, and let me make a couple points here. The pair, Mr. Hogg or Ms. Gonzalez, never expanded on what the NRA allegedly did to constitute a threat. Never. Not in any of the interviews I saw. Two, the NRA, as far as I can find out, has not responded to Mr. Hogg's or Ms. Gonzalez's criticism or their statements of threats. And three, I think, I think the NRA is being very smart here in not answering these bogus, in my opinion, bogus uh, criticisms or bogus statements that they're basically threatening us uh, because it's, it's a type of Kafka trapping. And if you don't know what Kafka trapping, it's K-A-F-K-A, -A -A, Kafka trapping. Look that up. It's very, very interesting. Look that up. And if the NRA comes out and does any type of apology or anything like that, they got them. And that's called Kafka trapping. And I think the NRA is not going to play that game. At least it doesn't look like they're going to play that game uh, right now. Now, the whole, every, everything, you know, all the cards laid on the table here, the ones that are pushing this narrative the most about gun control is the lamestream media. It's the lamestream media. And, and the reason why they're doing this is, well, basically because they can. <laughs> they think that they have the ear of every American citizen and that they're just going to push gun control until they, they get gun control. And they think this is something that's going to carry them into the 2018 elections. All these kids uh, that uh, were marching on uh, Washington, D Washington D.C. last Saturday. Uh, this is going to be the wave and the momentum that's going to take them and, and win a majority in the House and the Senate 
in the 2018 midterm elections. The problem with that ideology is they don't understand the American psyche. When you start threatening their guns, when you start pushing an out of control gun agenda, an anti gun agenda, you're going to scare a lot of people. You're going to scare a lot of Democrats that don't believe in what you believe in, especially when it comes to the Second Amendment. They just don't. And so this is my prediction. You can mark it down. If they don't get off of this and they don't get off of their, if they take control, they're going to raise our taxes. They think this is a winning message and the young people are believing them. Don't you bet on it. Don't you bet on that. Matter of fact, my prediction is if they stay, stay the course the way they are now and they don't change with their gun control, higher taxes, uh, everything else come midterm election, I think it's going to be a, and pardon the term, bloodbath for the Democrats in, in the midterms. I think they're going to lose more seats in the House and the Senate. Matter of fact, I'm going to predict, I'm going to go on a limb out here. I'm going to predict if they stay the court, now they have to stay this course. If they stay this course and they add more of their progressive program to run on in 2018, which is a lot of folks uh, from the, uh, the Humanist Report to uh, Mother Jones Salon, they all want these folks to be more progressive. They think that's what wins. They think that's what was going to carry Bernie Sanders to the White House was that progressive agenda. Let them do it. Let them do it. But if they stay the course, I predict in the Senate, they're going to lose so many Senate seats that the Republicans won't have to worry about getting Democrat votes to pass anything through the Senate. Just my prediction. Now, this is an article from The Hill. It's by John Lott Jr. He's a contributor over at The Hill. And he's basically saying the media is out of control and is pushed for gun control. I'm only going to read a little bit of this. And this is probably old hack to some folks, but I think this goes along what we're what uh, uh, Mr. Hogg and Ms. Gonzalez is doing. Uh, fact checkers are out of control, and on the issue of guns, they no longer even try to pretend impartiality, especially on social media that is becoming a serious problem. Facebook has been working with organizations such as PolitiFact, Snopes, and Fact Check to filter news. Stories deemed false by these organizations are labeled as false and are much more difficult to spread virally. A couple of years ago, Fox News Special Report cited some research on mass public shootings by the Crime Prevention Research Center, which I preside over. What that told old, excuse me, when that old story recently started trending on Facebook, Snopes stepped in to stop it. Snopes' verdict was that our numbers were accurate based on the CRPC's definition of a mass shooting, but are but were also extremely misleading. How can you, I got to stop this. How can you be accurate and misleading at the same time? To me, that doesn't make sense. That dog just ain't going to hunt. I read on. President Obama kept, kept claiming that the United States was unique in terms of mass public shootings. So in 2016, he looked over the years, or we looked over the years of the Obama tenure and found that Europe had experienced more casualties per capita and a similar rate of attacks compared to the U.S. Snopes' attack never mentioned that we had used the FBI's traditional definition of mass public shootings. This definition excludes gang fights over drug turf and specifies what constitutes a public place. Instead, Snopes referred the definition used by Michael Bloomsburg, Every Town for Gun Safety, and Mother Jones. Now, those two organizations are some of the most progressive leftist organizations in the country, and you can't, honestly, folks, you can go over and look, but you can't even trust the stats and, and the information put out on every town for gun safety. It's that bad. Go do your own research. Don't take my word for it, but it's that bad. The so Snopes didn't exclude violence such as gang fights, nor does it require four or more people to have been killed, even though every town of Mother Jones followed that standard themselves. Instead, Snopes utilized a new definition adopted by the FBI in 2013, which also counts shooting with three fatalities. Presumably, the Obama administration favored this methodology because it produced an increase in the official count of mass public shootings. But Snopes didn't bother to mention that the four more definition has been in place for over three decades and is still used 
essentially by all academics. Now, that's where I'm going to leave that off on there because it, it just continues to go on that further and further and further. And the one, th the one thing I want to point out about that last article when it, when it comes to the fact checkers, I want you to be your own fact checker. I want you to go do your own research on this and quit relying on these sites that say they're fact checkers. Because all of them make mistakes, and, and a lot of them make more mistakes than what you realize. And you can do a good job researching yourself. It doesn't take long to research some of this stuff on your own. I use a search engine called DuckDuckGo. We talked about this on Friday's show. I use this search engine, and it's, it, it's, I think it's way better than Google. And it actually gives you the basic, the basic when it goes to searching. You don't have to wade through miles and pages and pages and pages to get through all the junk and all the copy, you know, all the ones that are just duplicated one right after the other. Do your own fact checking and fact check me. If you think I'm saying something wrong here, tell me. Put it down in the comments down there, folks. I appreciate Everybody that's been coming to the channel here, I've gotten, after I've come back off that community strike with uh, Emma Gonzalez, the uh, 15 things she's done wrong, the views have been climbing on that. I won't say it's viral, uh, as YouTube would say viral. It's viral to me because I'm getting a lot of views on it. I'm gaining subscribers to that. Comments, oh my goodness, I'm getting all sorts of comments on it. Good, good positive comments uh, about what I said, you know, and critiquing me. Some of them actually critiquing me on what I said. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the comments. I actually look at all the comments uh, that come through. through. YouTube makes it easy for uh, creators to do that. So I look at them, I'll comment. A lot of times I'll, if I like it and I don't want to comment, I'll just give you a thumbs up. If I don't like it, I'll give you a thumbs down. I want you to do the same thing with my program. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Tell me what your thoughts are. Critique me. Help me to make this show better. Like, like I said, like it. Support me. I have a PayPal and a Patreon site. I need your support. I'm still doing this for free. I don't, I don't charge anybody anything. I do have uh, some supporters now. I pray that I, I get more of them in the future here. Share this. The best way I can tell you to help me with this whole thing is to share it with folks, word of mouth, tell them you like this, you like what I'm saying, you like what I'm doing, you want to help me out on the program here. Share it. And most importantly, if you really like what I'm doing, subscribe to it and hit the notification bell so you know when I put out another video. We're going to be in the next videos. We're going to be talking about the Second Amendment. We're going to talk more about uh, Mr. Hogg and, and Ms. Gonzalez and some of the other things that they're they are doing and they're about. And we're going to have some short videos coming out here towards the end of the week. And uh, I just hope and pray that uh, uh, I get this done. And I just thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming by and watching my video. Remember, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Have a great rest of the day, folks, and God bless, and we'll see you on the next video.